Hey, this is Zach here, and uh, I'm making a video going over um, my artistic process when it comes to digitally illustrating art because I've gotten a lot of questions regarding, uh, you know, what brush do you use, what are your settings, uh, this and that, and so I thought the easiest way to show you guys would be to just dive right into it and make a video. So um, uh, let's just open up. I have. Photoshop CS4 and I already started roughing out a piece um, and for the record this video is not going to be a tutorial um, this is a process video I'm gonna be showing what I do so um, you can follow along but it would help to have a general knowledge of, of Photoshop so um, for example when I maximize this window uh, I'm not going to be going through every step and saying, oh, press this key, do this, this is where each tool is located. So if you want to follow along uh, and you don't have a basic knowledge of Photoshop, you should definitely look up some online tutorials or even get some uh, textbooks regarding it. And um, that is enough talking about uh, learning how to use Photoshop. So uh, what I normally do is make an image that is, well, um, when I go by inches, I usually do 11 by 17 and then 600 DPI just because it's really huge and I can get a lot of good detail and it gives me some room to kind of resize things and I can always know that I can print it out and it'll be super, super crisp. Um, I also work in CMYK if I know it's going to be printed or, you know, RMGB. I think I said RMGB. RGB if it's not so uh, the piece I'm working on right now is sort of an androgynously handsome but beautiful guy and I'm gonna be making a wolf kind of coming out of his stomach so it's gonna be really weird and really surreal and kind of creepy and I'm really into to, to drawing that kind of stuff so um, my process for this is I like to keep things organized. I'll just make a new layer, uh, call it roughs, and I'll <clears throat> excuse me. I'll make a random blue color for my roughs just because it's it says rough draft to me. Um, also, I guess I should mention that I'm using an Intuos for pen and tablet, but any will do. Um, this is just my favorite uh, one. So. Uh, usually what I do is I'll go in and I'll take a low opacity, something usually around the 25% uh, kind of area, and I just, what what I you didn't see because I didn't want to be recording for hours is uh, when I make this kind of stuff, I just do, you know, your basic art class construction. I, I gesture a kind of egg shape, I add on the back of the head, I find the center, you know, and then I find my brow line and I kind of put a nose on it and start playing around and then I just gesture until I get it. And that's, um, and then I start adding on to, onto it. And once I start getting what I like, I start erasing, uh, you know, uh, the excessive gesture lines to kind of help me get a clearer idea. And then I just start finessing that kind of stuff. Uh, also forgive me for what, is inevitably going to be a painful amount of uhs and you knows and ums. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is the kind of process I do. Um, and as far as my, my strokes go, I'm just doing really loose, really gestury stuff because I don't want it to get too stiff. And I, and I g switched in between my, my uh, eraser and brush and really just... Um, I really love drawing drapery, and, and so uh, I, I like to make the fabric kind of exaggerated and really pillow out and, and, and move in a certain way, and, and I'm probably going to give this guy like a necklace or some kind of low-cut uh, swoopy neck to his things. I want to give him a really cool denim vest and make him sort of punk, sort of rockabilly, just a, just a weird-looking guy, and see right now this is me gesturing kind of belt loops and and where I assume uh, 
you know, the, the crotch of the jeans and, and the way that, that works. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of it. And I just kind of start gesturing and, uh, get in a really loose place. And then, you know, this is where it's starting to, starting to go. And I, I'm, I'm liking the composition. I'm liking the direction. It's a little bottom heavy. So, you know, I I try to get all my resizing done in the rough stages of it because you don't want your final lines to be stretched out and then, you know, not have room for anything. So I think this is about good. So I also compulsively save all the time. So Command S all the time. Uh, and if you don't do that, you freaking should. Uh, so yeah, he's also got kind of like a mullet. And uh, what I do now at this point uh, I've got it far enough along where I can just start doing my final lines and whoops uh, as you can see I've sort of oh, I've sort of uh, gestured where this wolf's head's gonna be you know I don't know if it's gonna be tearing out or just kind of floating out in like a surreal way but you can see I started I started I started uh, gesturing uh, a sort of snarled mouth and obviously there's going to be you know some some really gnarly fangs coming out and it would be, probably be really cool if you had a wagging tongue or something and and some really huge uh, scary eyes just kind of bulging out of the head uh you know and and a furrowed brow line and when when you when you want to make that gnarly snarl with like a flared nostril and uh, yeah, as you, you can probably tell, I get really excited when when I start gesturing and stuff. But like I said, this is kind of at the point where I finessed it so much that I don't want to waste too much more time making a final piece of art in the gesture. So what I'll do is make a new layer, uh, staying organized. Let's call it lines. And uh, for those of you who ask me about what brushes I use. I got a lot of questions about that and if I use a custom brush and this and that and honestly I don't. I just, uh, if you bring up our, our brushes palette uh, or window I guess in our palette but I, I pretty much just use the number one brush and turn on the shape dynamics of course if, if you're new to the uh, tablet world. That's what you need to, let me increase my diameter for exaggeration. Uh, if you don't have your shape dynamics, what you'll get is a really dead, uniform flat line. Let me make this darker for you guys. You probably can't even see anything. What you'll get is this really uniform, super lifeless line. Look how dead that looks. You know, you don't want... Ah, just look how terrible that is. Well, <laughs> drawing too, uh, but it's so flat, right? So... Uh, yeah, in, in case, in, in, in case you're new, uh, this is what I do and, and do shape dynamics and that way I get my nice tapering, lovely line. Um, and yeah, so, uh, enough dilly dallying. Let's just do full black. And I usually work about a number 20 brush, but I, I change all the time. The brush size doesn't really matter. That's another question I get. I don't really understand. Uh, I also try to drop my roughs so that they're not distractingly thick. Just a ghost of an image for me to, to start inking, uh, digitally ink, I guess. And I usually start with the eyebrows. I'm not sure why, but I just do, you know, uh, short, quick strokes. Wait a second. My opacity is low. Let's get rid of all this stuff again. Whoop. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just do short, quick strokes. Also, uh, if you have CS4, I'm not sure if it's in earlier Photoshop's, but it might be. I hit the R tool a lot so that I can rotate this as if I was, uh, you know, uh, inking a, a piece in real life. Because if, if you guys have any experience uh, inking with a brush and pen, you need to constantly rotate your, your canvas or your Bristol board or whatever it is. And I need to do that digitally too, because my, the way my hand works, I have a very, very specific way that it wants to go. And if I'm not going that way, I just, 
I can't do it. So, uh, instead of, whoa, that's a huge racer. Instead of wasting my time filling this in, I'm just going to hit the wand tool and fill it in with the bucket. Also, I don't think I mentioned that uh, I use the pencil tool, and some people might be freaked out by that if you're not used to using it because when you zoom in, it's all bitmappy and jagged. But the thing is, I'm working at 600 DPI, and that's such a huge, huge resolution that when you zoom out or when you print it, it's it's going to be totally smooth. And not only that, but it's going to be super, super crisp, uh, which I am a big fan of. So yeah, this is this is where I start uh, playing around, and I wish, I I always wish that I I could be faster and and uh, like a lot of my my comic book heroes um, like Jack Kirby and stuff like that, but I just can't. I I have to work slow and steady, and I have to. Well, uh, some people can really work on super loose, rough uh, sketches. But not me. I I mean, look look at this face. It's so I've rendered it so much. I because I can't. I, I'm not good at doing loose, and I think it's good to always try to be faster. Because I'm definitely faster than I used to be. But I also kind of ex accepted that I'm not you know freak of nature, Jack Kirby faster or anything. So yeah, this is kind of my process. Um, I, I'll go in, and if I don't like the way the line tapered, I'll go with the eraser and, and just kind of do that. But I end up doing this for a couple hours, and that's how I get a, you know, uh, inked, digitally inked uh, piece. So I'm going to stop the video for now, because uh, I'm sure this is getting long, and I'll come back when I have fully inked this entire thing, including the, the crazy snarling wolf face. So... Yeah, I hope that was helpful, uh, and if you have any more questions, I'll try to answer them, and uh, yeah, I'll see you around.